the number of annual veggie varieties that we're growing next year. And over half of those are varieties that we've never tried before. See, my New Year's resolution for 2023, and I'm pretty committed to this, is to grow 20 times more food than I grew this year. But here's the thing, if you're choosing seed varieties based on their descriptions alone, you're gonna have a really hard time because they all just so happen to be the most productive, the most vigorous, the hardiest, the most beautiful, and of course, the most delicious variety out there. The thing is though, there are real differences to look out for too, important ones, which is why I hope you'll let me show you some meaningful seed traits you can keep an eye out for when planning your garden next year. We've spent so much time researching varieties and I would love for some of that work to benefit your garden and your family too. Let's get into it. Now, one of my absolute favorite variety traits or qualities that I love recommending to people is called Parthenocarpi or a Parthenocarpic variety. So for instance, take this variety Unagi, it's a cucumber, as well as this variety Corinto, also a cucumber. I picked up both of these from Johnny's this year. And one of the big reasons, among many reasons that I chose them is that they are Parthenocarpic. And what that means is these plants, the female flowers on these plants, they don't need to be pollinated in order to grow the fruit to maturity. Basically, every female flower that grows on that plant is just going to automatically produce a full-sized fruit, even if there is no transfer from a male flower to that female flower. And the reason that I think that is so cool is it automatically increases our production, the amount of food that we get out of our garden with zero work on our part. Now, another cool thing about Parthenocarpi is that it's not just helpful for specific climates. It's helpful for pretty much anybody. So for instance, I'm in a very hot climate and Parthenocarpi is awesome here because in July and August, it's often too hot for pollen to be viable. Pollen simply goes bad when it's our hottest times of the year. And so of course we have really poor production during those times of year, but a Parthenocarpic variety can help ensure that we're still getting at least some food. The heat still obviously is an impediment, but we at least get some production because those female flowers at least don't need pollination. They don't need viable pollen. Now, similarly, if you're in a colder climate or if you're in a very cloudy climate, places like the Pacific Northwest, or the San Francisco Bay Area, that's another really common one. Uh, in those places, it can often be too cool or not enough sunlight for that pollination to happen at a good clip. But with a Parthenocarpic variety, you just don't even have to worry about that variable. Now, finally, another really cool thing about Parthenocarpi is that it's not actually just limited to cucumbers. Did you know there are also Parthenocarpic zucchinis? So for instance, the variety Parthenon, probably the most common Parthenocarpic uh, zucchini, it's definitely a cool one to try growing, or Turkish Delight, that's an eggplant. Uh, did you know that eggplants could be Parthenocarpic? And even tomatoes. Although admittedly, these aren't very common, there's a group of tomatoes, again, out of the Pacific Northwest, out of Oregon, that were bred to be Parthenocarpic due to that very cloudy, cool spring weather there. Uh, those include the varieties Legend and Oregon Spring. Another great trait to look for is slow bolting or slow to bolt or slow to go to see. There's a lot of different ways to describe this particular trait, but basically there are some varieties of some plants like this slow bolt lettuce aptly named, right? These varieties are basically like the name would suggest they are slow to bolt. All bolting means or going to flower means is that the plant is going to prematurely stop producing foliage, stop producing leaves, and start focusing on producing flowers and producing seeds. And it does that because it thinks that conditions are bad for some reason, that it needs to go ahead and short circuit its natural life cycle and just focus on reproduction, focus on creating viable seeds. Now the problem for us obviously is we don't get as much food from our plants as we want to. Now where we live, there's a couple different reasons that we see bolting happening. And bolting's a really, really big problem here. The first and most common is just, it gets too hot. So our spring garden, our fall garden plants, they're not gonna do very well in summer. Not a whole lot we can do about that. But the other reason and the thing that we can control for is our springs and falls, they tend to be very variable. So it can get much warmer during the day than it gets during night. And that can happen very quickly. Or the days get much, much longer and they do that very quickly. And the plant gets kind of confused and it gets kind of stressed when all those changes are happening, particularly around mid-spring, that's where we start to see a lot of bolting. And then we lose out on a lot of our spring and fall production. And that's where these slow bolting or slow to flower varieties are so amazing because they can help the plant kind of 
just withstand some of that variability and changing in conditions and continue to produce through that full spring crop instead of just going to flower early and terminating what otherwise would have been a good season for us. If you, like us, live in a very warm climate or at least an area that gets very hot summers, you may be interested in looking for the keyword heat set. What heat set means is the plant is able to produce and set fruit even during those hot months of summer. Now, Parthenocarpi, which we already talked about, can definitely help with that, but it isn't a magic bullet. It's not a silver bullet. Another trait that helps with that is heat set. So for instance, this year we are growing the variety of tomato called Estiva. And the reason that we picked up Estiva is that it is good at setting fruit in a variety of conditions, even when it's cooler, or for us, more importantly, when it's really, really hot. And while that might not seem like a huge deal, tomatoes love the heat, right? Actually, where we live, and for a lot of folks in the United States at least, we can sometimes lose out on good production on our tomatoes and our eggplants and really any of our summer crops for months at a time. I'm not saying it's as perfect of a solution as shade cloth, but it's a much cheaper solution. This right here is Tetsu Kabuto. Tetsu Kabuto is a variety of winter squash that has long been popular in Japan and Brazil, but for whatever reason, hasn't really taken off in other countries including the United States where I'm growing. Now, the thing about Tetsu Kabuto, the thing that makes it so interesting is that it's a hybrid. But wait, don't skip past this yet. When I say it's a hybrid, I'm not talking about that kind of hybrid. See, in the gardening world, when we were talking about hybrid varieties, typically we were referring to a hybrid of two varieties, right? We might cross two strains of tomatoes, but they are still the same species. They're still both standard tomatoes. Tetsu Kabuto isn't that kind of hybrid. Tetsu Kabuto is a real hybrid of two different species of winter squash. In this case, it's a cross of the Japanese kabocha squash. More importantly, it's a maxima, cucurbita maxima, and a moscata squash, cucurbita moscata, or more specifically, a butternut. It's a cross of butternut and kabocha squash. And the reason that's so cool is because these true hybrids, they tend to have hybrid vigor. They tend to be stronger. They tend to withstand pest pressure better. They tend to withstand disease better pressure. And while I've never grown Tetsu Kabuto, the specific variety of winter squash, by all accounts, that is definitely the case. It is better at withstanding one of the most challenging aspects of growing winter squash, which is the vine borer beetle. So I'm really, really excited to try this one out. If you are struggling with a specific type of plant, you may want to look into some varieties that are true hybrids, hybrids of multiple species that might be a little bit more vigorous in your growing area. The next trait that I wanna talk about is early maturity. And I realize that you probably are already familiar with early maturing varieties or fast maturing varieties. It doesn't sound that exciting, but I, I really think the power of a truly extraordinarily early maturing variety sometimes gets discounted a little bit much. So let me just give you a quick idea of some of the varieties we're growing that are particularly fast to put on fruit or to give off a harvest. So for instance, we have the cherry tomato, grape tomato variety, Valentine. Now, Valentine is cool for a number of reasons. It's actually bred with a wild type variety in order to have higher lycopene levels. How cool is that? But in addition to that, it puts off food 55 days, 55 days, a mere two months after transplant. That is incredibly, incredibly fast. Or the variety of eggplant, Millionaire. Now, Millionaire is one of the absolute fastest maturing, fastest to put off food varieties of eggplant out there. It is also 55 days. We also are growing this year a variety of zucchini called Green Machine, which will put off food in as little as 45 days. But what's interesting about Green Machine is that 45 days, that's not from the point of transplant. That's from the point that you plant the seeds, which means if you were to start Green Machine inside, when it's still too cold to actually grow zucchini outside, say two weeks ahead of time or 10 days ahead of time, you can get this plant to the point where you're able to go from transplanting into the ground to getting food to somewhere around 30, 
35 days, just over a month. That is incredible. Or if we want to talk about leafy greens, check out Mizuna. Mizuna can give you a crop of baby greens, baby Mizuna, which are absolutely terrific, by the way. They're even better than the fully mature Mizuna leaves, in, in my opinion. That can happen in as little as 20 days. Now, the reason that that is so cool or so powerful is it allows us to get a really true full spring crop, summer crop, and fall crop all in the same area of the garden. These fast maturing varieties really let us get a huge variety of food out of the same plot of garden. They're really, really cool. But if I had to narrow down and recommend one type of plant that you should really look into a fast maturing variety for, it would be zucchini, like this green machine zucchini. And the reason for that is zucchinis tend to naturally peter out pretty soon after they start putting off food. So you're normally only gonna get a few weeks to a month of really full production out of your zucchini plant. And it's most often better, or at least more productive, to replace those older plants with a new zucchini. So what you do typically is you plant that zucchini in the ground, and then say three, four weeks later, you start a new zucchini inside so that you can transplant out that new zucchini after the original one has been putting off food for three weeks, a month, whatever it is. 